Okay, we're back on the roof here. A few days later after we installed these panels, these are the 12 that we installed with those two by four brackets and braces using those small two hole flat uh, brackets that we used for helper brackets. And we're gonna go back and install these uh, beefier brackets to finish off the install here. Uh, we did have a storm during the uh, last few days where we had a 60 mile an hour gust of wind not a huge storm but enough to test that even with these little helper brackets uh, and the mounting braces here with the two by fours plenty to keep these secure on the roof like we said before the 12 panels here and series in parallel in conjunction with these eight cells or eight panels you see six here two back there they'll be on this roof and um, we'll be raised up a little bit you can see how I was mentioning the um, shade that's cast from this gable to that roof that we're gonna have to make these panels a little higher about two or three uh, shingles higher uh, to accommodate uh, getting them out of that shade but if we move them up, we'll be able to do about six in a line and two above for eight for a total of um, 20 panels. And we'll also be using this roof over there for about, one, two, about eight more over here, hopefully maybe 10. But we do cast a shadow there too, so we're limited to how far we can go this direction um, to handle those panels. But that would be the, the three south-facing um, roof real estate that we have to put these panels uh, the old panels that you see there were the ones that were attached to our pergola which were flat mounted which is not a very good angle to capture sun and mainly east facing uh, again only collecting that early morning sun not catching the uh, overhead south sun uh, as you can see that's late in the afternoon that's our, our sun casting here on the south side of the house this is a way more optimal um, position for these panels and the angle is pretty good for a year-round uh, collection roughly about 30 degrees which for summer and winter average is going to do us pretty well uh, these panels over here that we had up for the last two years were mainly just to charge a small battery bank about a four to eight kilowatt hour battery bank that we had for some off-grid uh, emergency power and uh, there's our utility line coming in from the utility company and we are the last um, residents on the line so we do have more frequent outages than uh, most people in the county here and in the area uh, due to being the last one on the line it's harder for the company to come out here and service these we're about a, two miles before it hits the next line uh, for service so when the power does come off or goes off because of the uh, power company shutting it off for our wildfire prevention safety initiative out here uh, we have a lot of power outages due to wildfire uh, safety precautions high winds dry land um, they're turning off way more frequently in the summertime for us and uh, uh, late fall until we get our first rains and then they uh, stop that initiative but we do lose power quite a few times over the year and with these panels and the small battery bank that we had kept us up and running at least for lights TV, a uh, small amount of heat, refrigerators and whatnot. So we were never really without power, um, minus maybe the big 220 lines like the um, stove um, AC, which we would have been would have been using uh, during the summertime. But for our purposes, it was just a backup off-grid small power wall, DIY power wall that we had. And I'll show that in another video. But as promised, we're back up here. Going to uh, show you how we're going to wire these I did get a combiner box here from a company called eco worthy and that's a six string combiner box that uh, originally was going to be for uh, all 20 of these but redoing the calculations for our um, uh, charge controller we are going to be able to series these uh, put these in series of three panels so one two three and uh, series 
that will keep us under the voltage uh, capacity or the voltage max of the um, charge controller and also putting in parallel with these three so we're going to be somewhere around um, eight strings of three but with this combiner box at six we're going to cap off on that one combiner box at six and that will keep us under the amperage um, for that line as well uh, it's a 200 volt max 100 amp max charge controller so between uh, the open voltage on these and the amperage per which is uh, roughly 45 volts open current or I'm sorry open voltage VOC on these and then 9.98 uh, open uh, amperage on these um, so uh, with that charge controller we're going to be able to handle uh, eight strings of three or even six strings of three that we're going to be doing um, I'll go ahead and show you the combiner box right now and then we can uh, start the process with the uh, wiring all right here we have the combiner box like I said it's from a company called EcoWorthy um, they do sell these on Amazon I'll leave a link in the description below um, on Amazon where I got these this is a six string uh, PV combiner box with lock and key and um, they advertise this as waterproof or water resistance or uh, um, environment proof but uh, it isn't a metal casing with a um, cushion seal kind of like the combiner boxes that you see at Lowe's or, bo or box stores um, and mentioned earlier here are the brackets that we're going to be putting on uh, to reinforce the bracketing system with the braces these are some double thick stainless steel six hole with um, uh, extrusion points on here so they will have a good hold they are three holes on top which will be the um, uh, self tapping screws that will go into the solar panels and then three screws in the bottom that will go into the 2x4s or just basic wood screws uh, but two brackets per panel 12 panels on that one side of the house so 24 brackets and um, we're going to put, put those on next as part of the install and then right after that we'll go into the wiring but let me pull this out of the box and show you what we have going on here all right I got the combiner box out of the box uh, that came in came in well packaged with these foam inserts kept it pretty protected in transport as you can see it has the six string MC4 connectors coming in for the six input and combines into one DC output with a grounding um, option as well I do ground these and um, and put a grounding uh, common on all these panels that will be featured in part of the um, the wiring process but I guess we'll use this opportunity to use this as an unboxing and kind of a overview of this combiner box which will be part of the install of that wiring it comes with the box a set of keys key port uh, this would be for more of a commercial style install so you can you know nobody gets into your panels and tries to take your wiring or fool with the wiring or for safety purposes it does have the uh, high voltage uh, emblem on there with a small one sheet uh, product guide and um, serves as a kind of a manual and specs and there's a kind of a and I'll put a close up of these specs but we're looking at a um, uh, 250 volt per array uh, string capacity on these and each string is uh, fused with a remo removable fuse I'll open up the box here the key does stay in when it's unlocked so you don't leave it there so it acts as a handle too very similar to the uh, combiner box that I made down at the pump house which I featured in a previous video and if you click above I'll, I'll link that video so you can see how I set it up myself and how the professionals do it very similar same components these drop out and have these bolt style fuses these are rated for 12 amps you can change them out a little bit higher 
These can handle a little bit more than that, but that's just the freezes they come with. Breaker, combiner. Um, these are big one directional diodes, uh, so you don't have voltage coming back one direction. Um, nice silicon wiring, appropriate gauge for what we're working with, with larger gauge combined. And um, as I said, the DC output in here, which combines these six into one, which will be in this line right here, going into the house, which has already been servicing us for a couple years now. Uh, that's six gauge with a 10 gauge uh, ground, and that ground goes down to a grounding rod, copper plated grounding rod on the other side of the house that we uh, will put on these panels to give them all a common ground. And um, the next thing to do would be to mount these eight, but since we're only combining the 12 that are on the other side of that gable, uh, we'll use the, maybe just use two in series instead of the three I mentioned earlier, so we can keep the amperage down and the voltage down. Um, to only do this six and use maybe a smaller combiner box for the rest of these. But given the fact that we have 12, we can use two in series. And then those two in series will have six in parallel for the 12 panels. So we might have a couple combiner boxes here. The one here from EcoWorthy, they make a smaller one in a four port or a four string input, which is inside of a plastic uh, housing which uh, I believe will be a little better fit for these. And now that I notice this, the uh, seal here, I'm very concerned that that's not gonna be as waterproof as they're indicating or I'm expecting. So I might have to put this under an eave of the house, maybe on this side. Which now that I think about it, I will do just to give it an extra bit of protection I'll hide it under here so we'll have access to it and it'll be out of direct water from the rain. And the last part of this build will be the rest of this west facing, or sorry, south facing sun. We have east coming in here, west that coming in here, south, north, south facing this direction. And this will be the last bit of real estate that we have that doesn't get blocked by any kind of shade. Obviously this gable or this peak is casting a shadow here, which limits us to pretty much no uh, solar panel option there. But here we are in direct winter. So the biggest shadow we'll have are right here at the end of December. So not, we're pretty low on the horizon for the sun. And that's gonna be probably our max cast of shadow there. And you can see we have about from say about right here over that we still have room for about another six panels. So between the 12, eight and six, we'll have plenty of room to add on some south facing sunlight panel collection. And the absolute last, and that's if the panels don't do enough, which I've done the math for our usage in the house, 24 panels or even 20 panels is enough we do have some west facing uh real estate here to put on which will get that late day sun evening sun and the summertime which will be on a different um, input array and charge controller so we won't be mixing different uh, uh, panels with different inputs um, just like these you see with shadow on them if this was casting the shadow at uh, late evening, these were getting full sun. Your PV array, if they're all on the same string or same combination, will only work as efficiently as its lowest link, and that would be the one with shadow casted on it. So we'll do our best to separate each one of these, I'll call them nodes, the south facing nodes and the west facing node, and even maybe a, later on an east facing node collect that morning sun so we have a lot of generation from even the first sunlight of the day to the last sunlight of the evening or late afternoon but they will all have to be on different charge controllers and different inputs so we won't be uh, reducing the efficiency of the whole uh, system 
But now that we have the 12 on here, we're gonna put the brackets on and then get our combiner uh, with the first 12 and that will be um, our first step of the um, electrical side. And... All right, I've started in, I'm putting these brackets in. Um, these are the uh, double thick stainless steel three hole, three hole wood screws into the two by four braces three self-tapping metal screws into the aluminum casing of the um, solar panel. Don't even have to pre-drill these self-tap. And with a impact driver, they go on really easy. I'll have to do two, and this was the original bracket, which was our, I'm calling them our helper brackets, that just put them into place so I can align the array and have them secure while I work on them but these will be uh, in addition to those I'll probably leave these in just for extra support but these next to these with uh, lined up below the second line that's usually common for all these panels of the size uh, they have these three grooves anything mounted underneath this second line uh, uh, bypasses hitting any kind of wire combiner box behind or service box or glass or anything so this is all open space behind the second groove down even the third groove down but the second groove guarantees that you're not going to be hitting anything and I go off to the far sides of the um, uh, casing so I am not even in the center where I can hit any kind of uh, wiring or any of the components behind the glass but that's how we're going to do those we're going to do this all the way down the array here two per um, panel 24 brackets total and um, that should give us a pretty secure uh, mounting uh, for our purposes up here and then like I mentioned we'll go ahead and get those uh, MC4 pigtails here combined into either a 2S or 3S configuration and then into our combiner box that I, uh, I have there all right I'll go ahead and finish this off side and I'll feature that in the next video this was just like a preemptive of what we're going to be doing now that we have the panels mounted and then going to be finishing up these bigger brackets to get those more secure just for peace of mind and then get this mounted um, underneath the eave over here so we can have that serviceable and a uh, pretty short distance for these strings to run and uh, that will be featured next video. So if you um, like what you're seeing here and you're ready to see the next part of the video for uh, the electrical input and uh, setup, go ahead and like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and then we'll go ahead and get that video out to you guys as soon as possible. I'll leave you here, guys, with a view of our uh, solar array in our field, which I featured in another video. I'll put the link above. And that was the solar array and uh, shed build that I featured. And if you haven't seen that, check us out. Again, like and subscribe, hit the notification button, and we'll see you guys next time. All right, guys.